Okay, I'm going to run you through the baits and tackle that we've been using here today. As far as baits go, primarily we've been using the pink worm and row bags here, which uh, Dan actually kindly tied up for us last night. Why don't you show us the rig there, Dan? Because the key factor here is actually is not so much the bait, but the presentation, presentation that you use to the fish, right? For sure. You want to start out with your small clear flows for the clear conditions. Then you're going to have a few uh, split shot right underneath just to stabilize the float. Then you're going to work your way down with smaller split shot until you get to your barrel swivel. At that point, I will usually use a small three, four pound fluorocarbon leader and uh, to a small, smaller split shot and into a small hook with a roll bag. That's basically the rig. So you're basically tapering your weight from heavier to light at the bottom. You've got your light leader. And the reason for that is with the lighter split shot at the bottom is so that the, uh, the bait will actually drift ahead of the float and right into the path of the fish's mouth. Correct. As far as equipment, uh, we're using center pin reels or float reels as a lot of you guys call them, right? Yeah. And uh, now so. on the reel, we've got this um, uh, fluorescent line. Right, this is, um, I'm not exactly sure what type of line, it's monofilament basically, monofilament right? Line. But that allows you to track it on the surface when you're drifting. That's right, right. it makes it easier for me and the people if I'm fishing beside uh, people. Just see where your line is and That's right. don't get tangled up. Great fun for fighting the fish. Got a 13 foot 6 noodle rod. You want that uh, extra length and a bit of whip in the rod to allow you to fight the fish on the light line. All right, let's get back to fishing, mate. Sounds good. On, boys, she's fighting Put, real hard. Putting eh? me to shame here, Dan. Yeah, she's fighting real hard. Got a good, good fish. I have a feeling this fish is uh, a very good fish. Oh, oh, there's another one there. Just moved. See yeah, that? Yeah, there's a lot of fish. A lot in, of fish in, in this pools. pool. She's coming back up. I'm just hoping there's not too many snags in there. You still yeah. running that four-pound lead? Oh, I've actually gone down up to three, and she's off. Oh no. Jeez. Got your bag and everything, eh? Yeah, I just spat the hook there. Name of the game with this type of fishing, though, I guess, right? That's lose how a lot it of fish. is. You lose fish, and I mean, that's why a lot of guys like fishing for them. They're so hard to catch or elusive. It's more of a hunting. Well, you're you're fighting of... them on such light tackle too. Yeah. I mean, it's a real test of skill, that's right? right? Trying to get these fish in. That fish was fighting hard. I, I I know that was a good fish. So there's a lot in here, it's just a matter of Well, time. I saw the one move out as that fish went through, another one came out. So it probably caught a few yeah. stacked right up on that edge there, right? Yeah. You were pretty close to the bank when you That's hit right. that. What we got here is a, you can see the sand here goes out fairly shallow and it drops down right on that outside edge, right? So what have we got there, about four feet of water? Probably? Yeah, you got about three, four feet of water. And they're just going to hold there, especially with this low clear water. They're just going to... The fish are going to move around and as the water starts to drop, they're going to find the holes that are the deepest and they feel most comfortable and where they feel right. safe. That's why you're going to find a lot of fish under logs and under undercut banks because they feel protected there. You'll notice today I'm, I'm wearing gloves and Dan's wearing gloves. It's pretty cold, eh? It's, it's in the minuses right now. That's right. You can sleep in on days like this. I mean, you got ice flowing through the river. These fish are slow, like their metabolism is down. Usually around 9, 10 o'clock as the sun comes up, you can actually come to the river and that's when they'll start to turn on. So usually the first light is good when it's warmer, but when it's colder, definitely you so want to- So then it starts to warm up a little bit, up. the fish will turn back on. That's right. Yeah, so basically if you just, if you can find any river or creek that feeds into Lake Ontario, I mean, they're gonna have fish, whether it be salmon or steelhead. So it's a matter of just getting out there, finding some clear water and finding the pools and then come back when it's a bit higher and dirtier, you should get fish. Yeah, I think we should, uh, Think about heading off now and uh, go to the next pool while they haven't been touched by anybody with this clear water when you hook a fish they, they usually spooky. they tend to spook so it's good to keep moving and then let the pool rest a little bit come back later so yeah. why don't we head off and try something a little different i'm into we'll... that beautiful oh fish. damn beautiful fish sean yeah that nice is a very fish. good fish let's see if we can land it eh <laughs> yeah let's hope we can uh get this one on the bank that's the tough part. That was on that pink worm. I switched over from the row bag. We've been fishing row and uh, kind of slowed down a little bit there. So I put on one of those little uh, three inch pink worms and seemed to do the are. trick, eh? He just, yeah, he hit that pretty good too. Wow, that's a beauty fish, Sean. Yeah. Looks like you got a nice female there. Probably about between six and maybe eight pounds. I tell you what, Dan, it makes you forget about the cold when you get one on, eh? Yeah. You got just in this right in the middle of this drift here, I've got a tree 
coming down, fallen tree there coming down into the bank. I just threw it off the end of that branch there and let it drift down into this deep, deeper pool here. And uh, he just inhaled that thing. Seems that a lot of our fish are at the head of the pool. Yeah. Like today. Sometimes you think they're moving up or do you think they're dropping back? Well, it seems like uh, with the melt, from the, the as the sun's coming up, they're melt. That's melting, right. right? I guess they're hanging out at the front of the pool. Maybe things are coming into the pools, like food. Right. Things are drifting out. Like worms will thaw out, and I guess at the front of the pool. It's I, yeah, a good tell spot. you what, it, it's a good question. We get a lot of. I had a few emails last year asking about the run, right? Like this is fall now. It's um, sort of late November. It's, it's bloody chilly, I know that. That's right. And, but there's also a run in the spring. Now, I was always under the impression there's two runs, but you were saying to the contrary of that, right? Well, basically what's happening here is in the fall, after the salmon come in, the steelhead will come to the mouth of the river, they'll move in, they'll chase the, the salmon spawn, and basically it's a head start for the spring, the spring spawn. Right. So these fish are gonna have a head start over the fish that run in the spring. Gonna have to step in here. Nicely hooked right in the corner of the mouth yeah, there. It's a great fish. Actually, it's a buck. You notice how I let Dan put his his hands in the cold water over mine. This fish seems to be uh, recouping from a lamprey mark right here. There you go. There it is. There we go. Beauty. Perfect. All right, I'm just gonna drop that there and grab the camera if you don't I'm mind. Gonna... I'll get you to take a quick picture of me. Sure, no problem. CPR. Brought to you by Nikon Digital Camera. Ready? One, two, yeah. three. Beauty fish. Ready? Perfect. Nice shot. Nice. Got a bit of a kite there, eh? On the jaw. All right, let's get him back. Should have no problem with that cold water. No, it's pretty lively, this guy. Yeah. There he there goes. goes. Nice fish, on. Beautiful. Frozen hands, but well worth it, mate. Cheers, thanks. It's time now for the Angler's View, brought to you by Pure Energy Rechargeable Batteries. Sean Steelhead inhaled a three-inch plastic worm drifted through a classic-looking pool. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. The pool was five feet in depth at the deepest point, tapering up to one foot at each end where the faster-running water entered the pool and where it rejoined the main creek flow. The pool had various pieces of structure strewn throughout, including overhanging and partially submerged tree limbs, rock and sunken logs. Migrating fish will hold in areas like this as they make their way upstream. Trout will take advantage of the security that the deeper water and its structural elements offer, often holding very tight to submerged objects. The strike zone in this scenario was the area between an overhanging tree at the head of the pool and a submerged log located halfway down the drift. The feisty trout were holding tight to the edge of the submerged log in approximately five feet of water. Sean cast his float to the right of the overhanging tree and allowed his float to drift down the pool. By manipulating the precision action of his float reel, he was able to palm the reel at certain points to maneuver the float strategically around snags that were visible. Rainbow trout will rest in areas where faster currents of creeks and rivers slow down. This does not necessarily apply only to deeper, more obvious pools. Small boulders, sunken log jams, undercut banks, and gravel humps are often enough to create mini back eddies that trout will hold in. Look for subtle differences on your favorite creek. Productive baits for fall steelhead are salmon roe, plastic worms, and steelhead jigs. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website.